Hello and welcome to another, or maybe your first, Swole Asimo video. Today we're going over something near, something near and dear to my heart, because it helps you score in the red zone. I'm not a big fan of being in the red zone. I know you guys aren't a fan of being in the red zone. It's tough to score. And here, I'm going to show you an ability you can use to instantly score in the red zone against any coverage, any defense, any time. The ability we're going over today, you might be able to assume, is the only ability with red zone in its name, besides maybe red zone deadeye, is red zone threat. Red zone threat has gotten me so many touchdowns in all Madden seasons and all pro seasons and weekend league. I don't play it too much regs, so I like playing against the Mutt teams because they provide a little bit more of a challenger, it's more competitive. But I have to tell you, it has changed the way I play in the red zone. It's so simple and it's so easy. Now enough talk, let's get straight into it. So I am using, of course, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here and Mike Evans is the one with red zone threat. Now the way to run this best, in my opinion, is just to use a fade. All you have to use is a hot route fade or maybe even a stock fade. Stock fades, I think, work a tiny bit better. It's up to you. So as soon as you reach this 20 yard line, the red zone threat will activate. So I'm gonna try to prove it from like the 17. Okay, so right now we have Mike Evans on David Long Jr. And I'm going to showcase how to pass this football. All we're going to do is lead it up and outside. So I'd about to say about 10 o'clock on 8 o'clock if you're looking at it like that. No free form necessary. And we're going to click on to Mike Evans and we're going to hit the aggressive catch. So when you highball it, we're going to press the left bumper or L1. We're going to lead up and outside with the left stick. And we're going to click on to Mike Evans with just circle. And then we're going to press triangle or hold triangle for that aggressive catch. So let's do it now, just like that. That time we didn't get into the end zone. I threw it a tad too early, but we still got it down to the two yard line. And then you could just throw it again. Let's do it one more time. So we're just gonna lead it up and outside on a high ball and we're gonna ag it. See, normally that animation would result in a drop, but because red zone threat is an override, it'll override the result of that animation causing for an easy touchdown and him to, and Mike Evans here. Him is a great way to, do, to describe him, but to hold on to that ball. Now let's put Jalen Ramsey there and see if it changes anything. Make sure to note that if he did have the medium row KO ability, which I don't believe he has, there is a higher chance that he could knock the ball out in man coverage. But since Jalen Ramsey does not, we should see the results of the complete domination of Mike Evans in this animation. So let's do it. Looks like Mike Evans did not win on the press, but it doesn't matter. Okay, Jalen Ramsey actually was able to swat there. Now I'm gonna show you why he was able to swat and what I did wrong on this play because it's important to show failure here. So when I let it, I let it a little too early and Jalen Ramsey was still running with me, allowing him to just step up and swat that ball. Just threw it a little too early. You have to do it when the corner is almost looking at your receiver, not when he's looking away. So right here, he's looking at him and I'm able to get it. As soon as that corner turns around, you almost don't want to throw it because they're able to get that swat animation sometimes. Once again, this will never be a pick, so you don't have to worry about it ever being a pick. And this is 99 overall Jalen Ramsey against 92 overall Mike Evans, so you do have that to keep in mind. So right there, we should get it easily, boom. Of course, it was 100% on David Long Jr. and Jalen Ramsey, still a very uh, the best corner in the game, I believe, able to make a little bit of a difference. But once again, Red Zone Threat is just showcasing how overpowered it can be. Now, exclusive to this, I do also want to show that it doesn't necessarily have to be the fade. I run it out of my favorite play shot fade cross, which if you guys would like to see in another video, I could show you, but it doesn't have to be the fade. Fades are so good because they allow the receiver to be in one-on-one -on -one coverage. But if it's not a fade, you don't have to worry. So right here, I'm gonna put Mike Evans in Chris Godwin's position, and we're gonna run corner strike. So this is a play that should give us one-on-one -on -one position while also being able to beat man and give us a little bit of separation on top of using the red zone threat. So right here we have Mike Evans one-on-one -on -one with Jalen Ramsey. He will likely lose the man coverage interaction, but he should win on the red zone threat interaction. That time we just overthrew it. Good throw, Mr. Stafford. Or Mr. Brady. Oops. I was looking at singing Jalen Ramsey Stafford. All right, here we go. So we should be able to throw that just like that and ag it. And even on the corner route, you notice that the red zone threat activates. What you want is routes that will make it a one-on-one -on -one coverage battle between the corner and the, the receiver. 
Now, it doesn't, now remember, it's not just corner routes, it's not just fades. I'm gonna go over some other plays that where red zone threat could be incredibly useful. And let's just put them in the slot here. Let's put them. Um, now, here's the problem though. If I do want to throw a crosser, I have to be very confident that it is a cover zero blitz. So if I'm in cover one hole here, it's highly likely that it'll be a two on one interaction. So right now I'm gonna put him in a spy so it's not a two on one. And I'm gonna put Mike Evans on a little bit of a deeper crosser. So now, knowing that it's man coverage here, we could throw Mike Evans on that crosser, red zone threat. Even if he gets pushed by whoever, he's still going to catch it. Now, we're going to cover it how well red zone threat works against zone. I do want to note that red zone threat is slightly worse against zone, but not because it's losing in the one-on-one -on -one interactions, but instead it's worse against zone because there are more two-on-one -on -one interactions. But cover three, you'll notice it's still just as fine. So here's a one-on-one -on -one coverage in cover three, and Mike Evans comes down with it with ease. That's because it's one-on-one -on -one with the outside third, and that's why I recommend the fade so much, or maybe even a corner route, or any type of thing going to the outside of the field. But if they do run something like cover two, which should be in the audibles here, here we are. If you do want to throw it, you do want to make sure that that cloud is completely out of range from even making an interaction with you, because you want that one-on-one -on -one interaction with the safety. See right there? We got a two-on-one -on -one interaction and we weren't able to catch the ball. But usually people will press their man, or Tampa 2 coverage. And this is also something you may want to run to the wide side to get more separation from the corner. Here we are, one-on-one, -on -one, easy catch from Mike Evans. As long as you can force one-on-one -on -one coverage, whether it be man or zone coverage, the red zone threat ability will be super overpowered. Now cover four, same case with cover three, it's just the quarter gets a little bit closer. So that's all that really you need to know. That kind of covers the video. Implement red zone threat into your game. You will not have to worry about scoring in the red zone. Once people do start doubling your red zone threat, you don't actually have to worry about throwing it to them anymore. It sounds dumb. Don't throw it to your red zone threat when they're doubled. It could result in a pick. It could, probably won't, but it could. But as soon as they take two of their defensive backs to cover one guy, everything else on the field should be open. That kind of concludes the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to check out the other videos. And if this helped you at all, hit the sub button. I post good tips. You guys have realized that by now. And have a great rest of your day.